Hello students, welcome to the class. In this class, we are going to do theme 2 unit 3 that is measurement of temperature. Now before we start with this session, we already know measurement is very important in our day to day life and in physics, we measure quantities by comparing them with a known quantity called the unit. Now when we talk about the term temperature, we might have heard this term very commonly if we get a fever. My mother or your mother quickly rush to get a thermometer to see how much is your fever. In that case, ideally, she is going to measure your temperature. The same we actually read or see in newspaper column where we see the temperature of the day. Right? So, let us see how measurement of temperature is done in physics. So, when we talk about temperature, what is ideally temperature? It is when we are touching anything hot or anything cold. For example, when we touch ice, we feel cold. Right? And when we dip our finger in hot water, we feel hot. So, ideally, this hot and this cold is what we are feeling. Right? This is something we are going to refer with the temperature. So, ideally, the degree of hotness and that of coldness. When I say cold water, I say how much cold? It could be very cold. It could be okay. When I say hot, it could even be warm. So, ideally when we get fever, we get warm only. So, what about we are going to tell someone how that, how much hot or how much cold a body is by measuring the temperature. So, ideally when we get fever, the doctor takes our temperature and they can tell how much fever we are running. So, ideally when we talk about temperature, we measure how much is the heat or how much is even the coldness of the body. So, what does the temperature tell us about the state of the object? It tells us that how hot or how cold an object is, right? Now, let us understand how we do this. So, temperature as we already got to know is the measure of the degree of the hotness or coldness of a body. The SI unit of temperature is Kelvin. Now, did we hear this unit ever? Ideally, no. When we talk about the doctor, they generally say if we are running with 100 degrees, they say you are running with 100 degrees of the temperature. Your body temperature is high, right? But what is the normal body temperature? It is around 98.4 degrees. But what is in front? We already told that measurement is done when we compare it with a known quantity. So, ideally when your doctor is telling you you have a temperature of 100, they are talking about Fahrenheit. The normal body temperature in degrees Celsius is 37. So, ideally when we talk about temperature measurement, we have different units that we use in our day-to-day -day life for convenience. But the SI unit of temperature is what? It is Kelvin which is given by capital K. Now, what does the doctor use to measure your temperature? Yes, you're correct. It is a thermometer. We use a thermometer which is a device that is used for measuring the temperature of different objects for noting down how hot or how cold they are. We use a thermometer. Right? Now, let us understand how a thermometer works. So, if you have ever seen a thermometer, you might have already checked out that it looks like something which is shown in the figure here. Right? Now, there are markings over it. Minus 10, 10, 30, 50, 70, 90, 110. So, the middle point will be 100. This is 80. This is 60. This is 40 and 20 and 0. So, we have different markings on the scale. Moreover, you put a bulb in your mouth when you want to know your temperature below your tongue, right? So, let's see what a thermometer actually has. So, figure alongside shows the common thermometer that we use not just in our day-to-day -day life but even in our laboratories, right? It is called a Celsius thermometer. As I told you, though the SI unit of the temperature is what? It is Kelvin. But when we talk about our day-to-day -day life, we use Celsius scale. 
in Celsius scale, the normal body temperature is 37 degrees Celsius, right? Now, the thermometer is consisting of a very fine glass tube having a very thin bore commonly called as capillary tube. So, what is it? There is a glass bulb at the beginning and it has a bore. It's a very connected to a very thin point which is the capillary tube that runs throughout of the thermometer. Right. Now, within the glass bulb, we have something very important, which actually is used to measure the temperature of the body. So, one end of the capillary tube is provided with a thin glass bulb, which is filled with pure mercury. So, we actually put in use mercury to measure the temperature of any object. On the other hand, the other part, so there is mercury in the glass bulb and the other part of the capillary tube is sealed removing all the air. So, there is only mercury and nothing else in the whole of the capillary tube in the glass bulb. The capillary tube is further protected by a thick glass tube called stem. So, you know what we hold in our hand of a thermometer is actually the stem of the thermometer because the capillary tube is so fine, so thin that if it is fragile, so if we hold it even with a little force, it might break. Hence, the whole of this is protected in a glass stem. The markings are made on the stem from minus 10 degrees to 110 degrees Celsius. Now, this is something important. Here, we are talking about a Celsius thermometer which is used in laboratory. Hence, in laboratory, we have to measure temperature which are even below 0 degrees Celsius. In our day-to-day -day life, we do not have to measure such, such temperatures. Hence, we put in use what? We put in use a Celsius thermometer with the rating starting from 0 and going up to 100 or 110 degrees Celsius. Right? These markings are graduations or degrees. We call each one of them as 0 degree, 10 degree, 20 degree, 30 degree and so on. Right? Let's take a note here. The temperature of a given body can be less than 0 degree Celsius. Such a temperature is expressed by placing sign of minus. So, as we have already checked here, the temperature started from minus degree. That means it is below 0 degree, right? Now, when we talk about anything that is below 0 degree, we have to mention it by a minus sign in front of it. So, minus 2 degree, that means it is 2 degrees below 0 degree. Minus 10 degree Celsius, it, is, it means it is 10 degrees below 0 degrees. Conversely, the temperature of a flame or hot oil can be above 100 degrees Celsius. So, we know that our body temperature, if it reaches 100 degrees Celsius, we say we have fever. Or the water starts at boiling at 100 degrees Celsius. But if we talk about any temperature there above 100 degrees Celsius, definitely there are. If we try to measure the temperature of a flame or anything that is super hot such as hot oil, its temperature will be further more than 100 degrees Celsius, right? Now, let's talk about the three different types of thermometric scales. As we already discussed, in measuring the temperature, the SI unit is what? The SI unit of temperature is Kelvin. So, let us start by understanding the first thing about thermometric scale that is Celsius scale, okay? This scale is commonly used for measuring day-to-day -day temperatures. The lowest point on this scale is zero and is expressed at zero degree Celsius as we already see it in the Celsius scale. It corresponds to the melting point of pure ice. Now, this is something very interesting. You might have seen that when we talk about ice and water, we know that the water starts freezing at zero degree Celsius. Moreover, the ice starts melting at zero degree Celsius as well. So, the zero degree Celsius is referred as the melting point of pure ice. The highest point on the scale when we talk about the Celsius scale that we use in our day-to-day -day life is 100 degrees Celsius, right? This 100 degrees Celsius is what? It is the temperature at which the water starts boiling, that is it starts turning into steam. So, the lowest point is 0 degrees Celsius, the highest point is 100 degrees Celsius. What is the length of the Celsius scale become? The length between these two points that is 0 degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius is divided further into 100 parts and each of them will show you 1 degree. These markings or these different division between 0 to 100 degrees Celsius is what we call as graduation, right? 
let's talk about the standard international scale or kelvin scale the temperature of bodies can be below 0 degree celsius we have already discussed can you think of a body that has a temperature below 0 degree celsius in experiments when we talk about substances such as dry ice or liquid nitrogen they have a temperature below 0 degree celsius so the temperature of the bodies that can be below 0 degree celsius is what we call we measure in kelvin scale so the question arises what is the last limit of the temperature right how low the temperature can go so it is very interesting that there was a great scientist named lord kelvin who theoretically calculated that minus 273 degree celsius is the lowest temperature that we can reach this is the ultimate we cannot go below this this is the ultimate lower limit of temperature this temperature could not be achieved even with the best of research tools available to the modern science hence it was theoretical right this last limit of the temperature that is minus 273 degree is also called as absolute zero or it is given as kelvin zero in the name of lord kelvin so this temperature cannot be achieved in experiments, but it was theoretically proved by Lord Kelvin that this is the last of the temperature. In present day, scientists have changed absolute zero to Kelvin zero in order to honor this, right? Now, how much is this the relation? The relation between degree Celsius and Kelvin will be simply given as on the thermometric scale. When we talk about Kelvin zero, which is the Kelvin scale, we have minus 273 degree Celsius, right? Minus 273 3 degree celsius is what we call as zero kelvin that means zero degree celsius becomes what zero plus 273 which is 273 kelvin if i talk you or ask you what could be 100 degree celsius then then it will be 100 plus 273 which will give you what 373 kelvin so the general formula for converting celsius scale into kelvin scale is simply what you simply take your temperature in degree celsius and add 273 to it you will get your answer in kelvin scale that is the si unit Right? Now, when I talk about the interconversion of temperature scales, we have to again look into the same matter. If we talked about 0 degree Celsius is how much in Kelvin? It is 273 Kelvin. So, the scales will be like this. For 100 degree Celsius, which is the boiling point of the water or that upper fixed point for degree Celsius for my Kelvin scale, it will be 373. So, there are total of 100 graduations in the Celsius scale as well as 100 graduations in the Kelvin scale. Do note that when we talk about the lower point that is 0 degree Celsius, it is called the ice point and the higher most point as the steam point in both of the different temperature scales right now here is a very interesting temperature given which is 20 degree celsius on my celsius scale how much it will be in kelvin we know for converting it in kelvin i have to add 273 to it it will give me 293 kelvin and that is what is the same marking on the kelvin scale so comparison of the celsius and the kelvin scale comes in temperature all the time let us do some questions for this. Convert the following Celsius temperature to Kelvin. So, it's very, very simple. We have first as 20 degree Celsius. We know the common formula to convert degree Celsius to Kelvin is just add 273. We will get the answer in Kelvin. One thing to note here, we do not put a sign of degree on Kelvin. Right? So, 20 degree Celsius in Kelvin will be 20 degree Celsius plus 273, which will give me what? Already we got 293 Kelvin. Let's do the second part, 125 degrees Celsius, again adding 125 to 273, what will it come? 8, 9, 398 Kelvin. And when we talk about minus 30 degrees Celsius, we do not have to worry about the minus degree sign, it will be minus, it is below 0 degrees Celsius, so we will again add it. That means we are subtracting it, so 7 minus 3 will be 4, it is 243 Kelvin, right? So we have converted the scales. I hope you got this and understood well.